No offense to him either, but he's not a very threatening person, right? Like, if you can't handle a conversation with him, who seems pretty reasonable, I haven't seen him engage in any screaming matches, about, like, consent and stuff, like, what what, what good of an advocate are you? Like, it seems like this should be, like, a prime candidate for, hey, I think you have problematic takes on consent, I think it'd be really good to talk about that so I can iron out my own and show other people, like, better ways to deal with consent. Or tell me, like, hey, why don't you go and uh, argue with them on this topic? Which is fair, you could, you could send me a message, like, hey, I think you should challenge them on this thing. Rather than doing this, like, we need to shut this person out, they have to be deplatformed because they're not big enough for us to engage with, and somebody might listen to his video and turn into like a serial rapist like why not like have more engagement with the thought rather than like an instant repulsion i just didn't think that you would be open to something like this why I i'm not i'm anti-rape did you know that <laughs> well yeah but you're also really spiteful and anti-wash do you think i'm so for, hold on i'm i will hold on you're okay. either gonna retract that statement or you're gonna be any you you need to give me do you want to talk about the mr girl stuff sure okay what I'm about him um, so have you changed your mind about platforming him at all? Yes. Initially, I was a little bit iffy on it, but now I'm full, now full steam. Right. I love it. I think he's a super, he's probably the most interesting person I've talked to online. Thank God. Cause holy fuck, everybody here is boring as fuck. Okay. So, uh, why, why are we going full force with it? Uh, I just think he's super honest, and I think he has a really interesting thought process. Um, and it's interesting to talk to people that haven't like gotten fully swallowed into one ideological pit um, to where they're going to give me all answers that I could basically write down myself. Um, where they're like a reasonably intelligent person, but they haven't engaged at least publicly with these ideas. So I can hear their thought process and kind of get through it. It helps me think of my own thought process through them. Um, and I just think it's an interesting perspective that I'm not going to get anywhere else. Um, I guess you just watched my uh, talk with Stardust, yeah? Um, a little bit, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, do you not think that platforming him despite some of his more odious opinions is maybe a tad irresponsible? Um, I would have to go and, well, I think that all the times I platform, I think I've adequately pushed back on the things that I thought were important to push back on. Um, I haven't watched the totality of content on his channel. It's possible that he talks about some things in a way that I would disagree with, but I mean, if those come up in a conversation, I imagine we'd probably talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I guess it just kind of feels like when the topics that we're addressing are like rape or pedophilia, that to me, it seems like these are things that you should address when you have someone on be just because of like the consequences of these actions i mean i don't every single person i bring on i don't immediately clarify their stance on rape and pedophilia to make sure it's okay to go forward right it's going to depend on what the conversation is i don't know your stance on rape or pedophilia or consent right so I, i'm like i'm not gonna i don't i don't clarify that with everybody the second we start talking i mean i imagine it'll probably come up in a serious conversation at some point if we do keep talking about these things but sure the, the difference between um like, I think the difference between, say, my opinions on rape and pedophilia versus his are that, um, you know, I don't really center my channel around um, being like an advocate for being more compassionate to the people that commit these things, which is something that is like a primary objective of his. So considering that, you know, when we look at the totality of his content, this is something that is really prevalent. You know, I would think that you as a very large streamer, I mean, do you not feel like a good thing for you to do would be to kind of be like, hey, you know, some of these things are pretty upsetting before I um, sort of legitimize you, we should push back on these. Um, no, I'm not going to watch every single YouTube video on a person's channel before to see which views I need to challenge them on. Like, we'll have conversations about certain topics, and if they disagree sure. on those topics, then I'll push back on those topics, but I'm not going to completely vet a person's YouTube channel before talking to them. I don't have the time for it. And I would sure. hope, more importantly, two things. One, that my audience is hopefully well-informed enough on these issues to be able to grapple with them, that they can actually think a little bit for themselves rather than just like wholesale fall into like, oh my God, like this guy actually says we can fuck 12 year olds. This is awesome. And then they all become pedophiles. And then two, um, further engagement with it. Maybe we'll get a fan to bring up a question where it's like, hey, I saw this video on Mr. Girl's channel. Like we should talk about this or what's up with this or whatever. And then maybe I'll have a conversation with them about that at some point. Sure. And, and I think for your first conversation with him, this makes sense, but You've had, what, three conversations with him now? Um, two? I thought you talked to him last night as well, didn't you? Oh, maybe that was the third one. Uh, oh, because okay. I talked to him so, once and then after Vosh and then a third one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, so okay. You've talked to him three times now, so I, I guess it's just kind of like, like, I wish and I feel like the most responsible thing to do would have been like, yeah, your first conversation with him, obviously you don't have to vet everything that's on the channel. I mean, 
it would be great, but I don't know that that's a reasonable standard to hold every single content creator to. Um, but I mean, when you have your second and your third talk, don't you think that after people are coming to you and telling you like, hey, there's some really disturbing stuff. And because you're platforming this person, their their numbers are skyrocketing. I mean, like, don't you think at that point you, like, it would be a good thing for you to be like, okay, maybe I should look into this now if I'm going to talk to this person again. Um, right? Maybe, yeah. So like, for instance, I didn't know much about this talk. I'm going to watch it after, um, probably if I'm talking to you, because I think it sounds interesting. I'll probably watch the video and then maybe we'll have a discussion on it. Um, uh, something about the talk with his girlfriend, I think. Um, you something about him saying it's okay to rape people or like consent, not lack of consent can be exciting or something. I'll probably watch that one because I'm interested. I'm, I'm actually going to DM you because I have um, all of the videos. So I'll DM you the ones that I think would be really um, important for sure. you to see. Here's like a, uh, I'm curious a question for you. If you think these are so problematic and it's something you're so invested in, why don't you just ask him to chat about it and then see, like clarify his position and have a discussion with him on it? Because I, I don't want to risk further legitimizing him. Okay, but um, hold on. His thoughts aren't unique, right? Like, if you can't handle it, like, no offense, not to, and no offense to him either, but he's not a very threatening person, right? Like, if you can't handle a conversation with him, who seems pretty reasonable, I haven't seen him engage in any screaming matches about like consent and stuff. Like, what, what, what good of an advocate are you? Like, it seems like this should be like a prime candidate for, hey, I think you have problematic takes on consent. I think it'd be really good to talk about that so I can iron out my own and show other people like better ways to deal with consent. Like, wouldn't this be like a prime target for that type of conversation? I think there's a couple of things like I'm not worried that I'm going to make bad points. Um, I'm worried that I, I'm worried that even being like I'm worried that me talking to him, people will go subscribe to his channel just out of the curiosity or like, you know, morbid curiosity or like, wow, this is crazy. Like the things you're saying where you're like, wow, this is a really um, he just says whatever. So I, I'm worried about people from my community being like, wow, this guy says crazy shit going and subbing and then that contributing to the algorithm further boosting him on its own. I feel like if I have him on, then other people are going to be like, oh, I can have him on to push back too. And no matter okay, how hold on. This is, that, yeah, I understand what you're saying. So this is like, a lot of people are doing this. This is like the Vosh take. What this essentially translates down to is, um, like, I can't debate somebody because, unless they're like bigger than me. Like if, if they're going to get more, it's a little mean way to phrase it, but like, if they're going to get more clout than I'm going to get by debating them, I can't do it anymore, right? Like, so my issue is that I don't think he's saying anything that unique. Right? I don't think he's saying anything that's like, oh, like I, uh, uh, like he's given some takes on consent. I've never heard something this crazy before, right? I think that a lot of the stuff he says is probably thoughts that are held more mainstream with way less consideration. So it just seems like a good candidate for like, oh, you know, we should have an argument with this person. So an argument that I find strange is like, if you're so afraid that you're going to lose an audience or boost somebody just by talking with them in a in like a combative manner, it makes me feel like. Not, and I'm using you in the general sense, not you personally, but you in the general sense. Like, it makes me feel like you are worried that your ideas are dog shit. That like, okay, I believe this thing about consent, but like, if anybody is in contact with this other person, they're gonna get infected with the worst idea immediately and nobody's gonna believe me anymore. Like, that seems like a sad way to approach something that you, I would hope, like have strong beliefs in. Sure, and, and I, I get where you're coming from there, but I, I think I'm concerned about, um, nobody knew who he was before he talked to you uh -huh. like i mean they, they did because he actually looked at the social blade stats he had a huge spike with the cuties thing uh -huh. but it was all bad so um you know he he flatlines for a while and then he releases the i'm a pedophile video like seven months ago and he gets another spike again but uh -huh. then it flatlines again well now he's just steadily growing uh -huh. so even though people are going you know he he's going on your channel he's going on Bosch's channel and people are pushing back against some of the negative stuff he says it doesn't really seem to matter because what I'm seeing is that he's continuing to grow. So do I think that I could make adequate um, rebuttals to whatever weird stuff that he's saying that I find inappropriate? Yes, but I think you could too. And I think Vosh could too, but Social Blade seems to say that it doesn't really matter and that he's continuing to grow anyway. So, so isn't that worth, doesn't that, isn't that, doesn't that demand some level of attention then? Sure, so I'm making a video mm -hmm. about him um, and where I'm not actually going to be having him come on. Um, I'm making a video where I take a look at everything he says that I think that is, is really wrong um, and I'm addressing it. There's another thing that I think is that, you know, he says this stuff on his YouTube and there's zero nuance and he just sort of is very sympathetic towards people who um, used to beat their girlfriends, people who, uh, you know, this anti-consent culture thing, people who have pedophilic urges. And then he goes on interviews and he says other different stuff. 
So the why not? But like, watch- wouldn't this sounds like it would be such a good thing to just confront him on then, right? And that could even be part of your video, no? Or even better, what if he is growing and now he's not going to stop because the evil Nazi destiny is boosting him, which I am, right? Now, what if you could talk to him and you get him to slightly like change his position on something? And he's like, you know what? I actually agree. The way that I talk about consent here is a little bit reckless. Like in my next video, I'm going to amend that a bit. Like maybe you could shift that, you know, growing thing towards something a little bit better. Or do you think that you completely lack the ability to do that? Or do you think he's like so dug into his like pro rape stance or whatever that he's never going to change? This is a, an almost 37 year old man. Um, I think that he is, he, he's very confident in his, his beliefs. Um, and I also am not entirely sure about how honest he is either. So I don't know that this person is necessarily a good actor, which is something that a lot of people keep saying. They're like, oh, he's refreshingly honest. Um, he, he very much says exactly what he thinks. And I don't know that I believe that. One, because everything is wrapped in so many layers of irony. Two, because he'll say stuff isn't a joke. And then later he'll say stuff is a joke three because he downplayed his comments about the school shooting. So it's like, I think- Hold on, wait, wait, wait. What do you mean downplayed his comments on like the school shooting? Or what do you mean he says it's a joke and he isn't a joke? I think he's been fairly consistent with most of these things, but- So, okay. So um, when he, the whole cuties thing, Uh he um, he made a video where he was like, cuties is not a joke. I stand by every word I said in that. Uh And then um, when I talked to Stardust today, she was like, yeah, but that is the joke. The joke is that he's- No, okay. I I think Stardust summary was a little bit off in terms of some of his things, but like, he's not joking. He's not joking about what he says, but I don't know if any of the stuff that he says is necessarily abhorrent or horrible and like shouldn't be taken seriously. Or do you think there were parts of that that should have been taken seriously or or shouldn't be taken seriously or was bad? Sure, I think that there's parts that are pretty bad. I mean, I think saying that like everyone is attracted to their own kids, that he thinks that everyone experiences sexual attraction to their own kids. I think that's pretty bad. Um, I think the whole like, um, it's the whole consent culture thing where he was like, the, the feminist is like, oh, well, you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, do that because it could be, you know, it, it's hard to stop yourself, right? And he goes, well, no, it's boring. And she kind of like, like peels back a little bit. And he says, I actually have the exact quote. I don't want to get it wrong. He says, um, there's another part where he says, even if you think you don't want to have sex, there's probably always a part of you that does. Um, it isn't could it's arguably only- like couldn't we say that this is a bit more nuanced in terms of the engagement with these topics so one of my criticisms of and i told him this is like i think you need to qualify your stuff a little bit more but i don't know if i necessarily outhandedly agree or disagree with anything you're saying right what that that statement is absolutely true right there are times when like probably you can have sex or you want to have sex you don't necessarily realize you're not 100 percent into it anybody that's been in a long-term relationship or maybe i'm doing a self-report here but in my opinion anybody that's been in a long-term relationship is that a partner where you're tired you don't really know maybe you have a headache like whatever you're like eh, and they kind of like push a little bit like okay yeah fuck it, i'm into it let's go or whatever like this this is part of like real human sexuality not like the textbook like like, oh, you know, like we signed the paperwork to go and consent and blah, blah, blah. And now we're good to go or whatever. Right. Like, I, is that really like the worst thing in the world to say? Like, this is like this thing no. alone needs he needs to be deplatformed or whatever. So my problem is my problem with so much of what he says is it's not necessarily exactly verbatim. There are some things where like exactly verbatim what he says I have a problem with. But I think a big part of my problem is that he pretends that he's like so nuanced and everything is so nuanced but you're right there's a lot of qualifiers that are missing from these statements so i think that's pretty the opposite of nuance um and you know if yeah, you're that's true but I, I think and that's i think this is really problematic because they're think about this think about how many young kids are on youtube that don't understand these kind of ideas and can watch this and be influenced by stuff like this think about how many young men because i mean i think yeah, okay i got it okay i got it i don't need this part okay so i understand what you're saying in terms of like oh it seems like this is lacking nuance or something right so my my issue is that i think that this tracks pretty closely though there's two parts one is that the vast majority of human beings on the planet are, are, are lacking like this type of ultra nuance in terms of talking about sexuality, number one, okay? And then number two, I do think that the candidness and, ha- now I'm giving his argument because I don't know if I 100% agree, but I agree with the fresh, I agree with this emotionally, maybe not intellectually, but it's really irritating that every time you have a conversation about a certain topic, people automatically, you need to give like the 52 page um, qualification before, uh, you, before you actually get to a point. Oh, so for instance, um, you actually probably attacked me over this. I'm trying to remember if you did or not. But I remember I quote tweeted a thread 
about something, um, I think a, an 18 year old said something like, oh, my dad said that my um, girlfriend was hot or something, or my boyfriend's dad said that I was hot and he's like 40 and I'm 18 and I thought that was weird. And um, she put in the post, she was like, I'm 18 and I couldn't even imagine finding a 17 year old hot. Thank you. That's insane. And, That's and, and I quoted that and I was like, this is hilarious. What a fucking stupid thing to say. And everybody yeah. jumped on me because they're like, you think it's okay that the father said that the 17 year old hot? I was like, no, but I don't think I should have to put a qualification every single time saying like, hey guys, don't rape kids, don't rape kids, don't rape kids. Then another thing came up where I quote tweeted another thread about how, hey, if you're gonna invite people over to your house, you should probably like, that comes generally after you're comfortable with them fucking you. So if you're inviting somebody over your house, it's probably gonna send some pretty crazy signals to them that you're ready to fuck. And everybody's like, so you think that if someone invites you to your house, you should be able to fucking rape that person? I was like, holy shit, no. But I don't wanna to have to quote every single time I'm tweeting. I don't wanna say, just so you guys know, you shouldn't rape somebody, you shouldn't murder somebody, you shouldn't rape children, you shouldn't like, and it's like, Jesus Christ. And it feels like with every single conversation you have, that can be a little bit oppressive sometimes. Um, yeah, I actually did. Um, oh, hold on, one Um, yeah, I actually did have an issue with this, um, and I, this actually, I think, illustrates my point pretty perfectly, was that, you know, your point was, hey, listen, if you're not comfortable having sex with someone, you shouldn't invite them over to your house because, well, that means you probably don't know anything about this person, that could be a dangerous situation, but I don't think that you fleshed it out that fully on Twitter. I think that what I said was immediately understandable to anybody but the most online turbo virgin or a person trying to read me as negatively as possible. This is something that I know in real life I could say to any girl and she would without even thinking like, yeah, duh. It, would, it wouldn't even be a second thought. It's only in the online world where they're like, oh, interesting that you're here to defend rape today, rapestiny. Like only online on Twitter will I get that type of response problem wasn't necessarily with you saying this. My problem was with some of the responses that you got. And I think this actually kind of hits really to my point with this guy is it's like, yeah, you can say things like consent is complicated, but you don't know what message your audience is going to take from that. Um, and I think that you tend to think that because you are rational and you're able to think through things, um, that all of your audiences as well, and like the people that follow you are as well, and they're not always. Um, sure, they're not always, well. but like, it's a big part of what frequently, I talk about. Yeah, go ahead. Frequently they're not. They want to emulate you because you are. You're logical, you're rational, you do a lot of your research, you do a lot of your homework, but you're also very, um, what is the word, um, abrasive, right? So a lot of your fans, are not nearly as logical, they're not nearly as intelligent, they don't put in the time and do the work. So when you tweeted that, yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna invite some random dude I know over to my house, and if he did something to me, it wouldn't be my fault, but I'm still not gonna do it. So like, that's fine, that's a fine point. But there was literally people in your audience, like I think someone in your audience was like, yeah, inviting someone over to your house, it's, it's consent, it is consent to fuck. And I was like, Ah, no! <laughs> so this is my problem, right? Is that you think that people are as rational as you are, and they're not. Okay, There's a lot so, of really crazy people that need their hands held. I hate that I almost agree with you, because he debated me back to it. Um, and I go back and forth on this. I don't want to have public conversations where I have to give a disclaimer about every single fucking thing I say. It, like, it drives me fucking crazy. I shouldn't have to tweet, like, before every statement, here is the 32 page disclaimer about not raping and murdering people just to have like a pretty basic piece of life advice about like, hey, yeah. don't invite somebody over that you're thinking about hooking up with unless you're ready to fuck this person. I think that like that on its own, I think stands totally fine. I, I don't think I need the disclaimer before that. If there are people that are disagreeing or if there are people that are running too far with that, you're free to argue with them or debate them or bring them onto your stream or have a bigger conversation about that if you want. But I, like, Jesus. That's what I'm kind of getting at, right? Is that like, I don't think that, well, first of all, I don't think Twitter is the place to have conversations like this because you know it's going to go awry every time. You know that if you just say something and you don't like really clarify what you're getting at, it's going to be crazy on Twitter because there are fucking insane people on Twitter. There's both insane conservatives that are like, yeah, women are breeding machines. I stand by that. Yeah. If you invite me to your house, I'm gonna fuck you. That's all there okay, is to that's it. Not one, no. That's not the average conservative too. There were more people saying that people would misinterpret this. There were 10 times more people saying people were gonna misinterpret this than people actually misinterpreting it. So who's the problem? Like, 
I, I don't know. I think there's a lot I of do. different- I do, I do. Because I look at my Twitter mentions a lot. There weren't that many people tweeting like, Destiny, that's so based. I love raping women. When women come to my house, I fuck them all the time. I invite my mom and dad over and I fuck my mom as soon as she walks to the door. And I say, well, Destiny tweeted. I didn't see a bunch of things in my responses like that. What I saw was a million virtue signaling, Care Bear fucking lefties, uh, tone policing, and, and fucking Care Bear squad. He'd be like, well, somebody might read this and think that that's okay to rape their sister that goes into their house when they just want to play Smash Brothers. I don't really think that many people are reading into it that much. I think it's okay. And if they are, then point it out to me. Like, hey, look at this problematic shit that's happening because it's like, oh, okay, fuck it. Maybe I'll change the way that I engage with this topic. But I don't see that happen. I just see a bunch of people worry that it's going to happen. I think that you can also look past Twitter, um, especially when we're talking about like consent culture, we can actually look at real life and we can see how this is often not respected. We, we know that we have a problem with rape. We know that we have a problem with sexual assault. So yeah, I mean, is it fair that you have to put 30 million qualifiers? No, it's probably not fair. But is this a conversation you should probably have on stream? as opposed to just tweeting out if, listen you know, my tweet is a rape listen i was a certified rape reducer okay because if you were a girl and you were thinking i want to go and hang out with this guy at his house and i'm like flirting with now maybe you'll see my tweet you'll be like damn you know what destiny says that that's a big sign they want to fuck i'm not going to do it so boom rapes reduced i think my tweet was an overall positive contribution to the raping landscape okay I'm i mean that's Oh, sorry, I just wanted to say, if there's one thing you're an expert on, Destiny, it's uh, like rape and rape analogies, right? So, uh... That wasn't yeah. an analogy. That was a direct... That was a direct conversation about rape, okay? I am, I am very glad that you are going on Twitter every day and you are cleaning up the rape landscape. Thank you very much. But I, I do think that my point still stands, that, like, you can't hold all of your audience or whoever might even potentially be your audience to the same standard of intellect and rationality that you hold yourself. And this is one of my biggest problems with his content is that, you know, when he says, well, you know, that's, yes, I mean that to me, yes, that's the thing you have to trade safety for excitement. Mm -hmm. I don't want some 15 year old boy to watch his channel and be like, nice. Okay, cool, and take the wrong message from that. So why not, is like, talk with him about it? I think he's a reasonable person. Be like, hey, do you think that, or like, ask him even what his opinion is about it. it may, maybe force him to, like, answer to some of these things. I don't know, I just, it seems like it'd be an interesting conversation. Maybe you can move him a little bit on it, like. Maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know that he wants to be moved, is the thing. <clears throat> I mean, I nobody know. wants to be moved from anything, right? That's human nature. Nobody wants to be moved out of anything. But I think if you, like, show, I think most humans, believe it or not, are probably decent people. And if you can make a compelling argument that like, hey, you're being a, a rape producer right now instead of a rape reducer, right? Maybe like, okay, yeah, maybe some of the messaging of my stuff, maybe I would change this a little bit if this is like genuinely how it could be read. Maybe? I guess I just think that if I'm not able to do that, um, you know, I'm, I'm not great at debating. I'm really not. I don't think that I'm a fucking moron. I mean, I know that I'm able to do my research. I know that I'm able to read about the things that I care about, but debate is a skill. Rhetoric is a skill and it's not one that I've honed. I've never taken formal debate classes. I've only done like probably less than 10 online. And I think that this is such a serious thing that maybe I'm not capable. And I don't know that that's because my ideas are terrible. It's just, you know, I'm okay with being like, hey, maybe I'm not skilled enough at moving sure. people on their And point. that's totally fine. But then why not tell other people to do it? Why not tell Vosh? Like Vosh, stop being such a pussy ass bitch that sucks at Metroid. And why don't you go have some challenging conversations instead of just like doing lame react content that even your own stream is getting bored of? Or tell me like, hey, why don't you go and uh, argue with them on this topic? Which is fair. You could, you could send me a message like, hey, I think you should challenge them on this thing. And I'm going to watch it afterwards. And maybe I will. Maybe I will talk to them about it. Like rather than doing this, like we need to shut this person out. They have to be deplatformed because they're not big enough for us to engage with. And somebody might listen to his video and turn into like a serial rapist. Like why not like be a little bit more uh, in, have more engagement with the thought rather than like an instant repulsion well because okay i mean i just didn't think that you would be open to something like this why i'm not to... i'm anti-rape did you know that well yeah but you're also really spiteful and anti-wash do you think i'm so for, hold on i'm i will hold on you're either going to retract that statement or you're going to be in a, you're, you need to give me one single example of a stance that you think i hold that is spite driven and if you want to retract, that's fine. I do not hold spite-driven stances, especially when Vosh is liking t more personal attacks against me than even you do, okay? My, my, none of my positions are spite-driven, okay? Even, even Vosh, I'll admit, even Vosh cannot make me pro-rape. Even if Vosh and Hassan both came out and said, you know what, we don't like rape, even then I wouldn't be pro-rape, okay? Well, I don't, 
I don't think that you would uh, you would be so spiteful that you would become pro rape. That's okay. not what I'm saying. So why are you but saying that saying like you're so spite driven? I don't think you would ever argue against this guy about like rape reducing. Like no, because I didn't think that you would ever take anything that I have to say about this seriously. I figured you would just be like, no, you're a stupid bitch. I don't care about anything you say. Well, when you act stupid and you don't say anything valuable about it, I will. But if you have like a valuable point, I think you make a valuable point. Like, hey, like I think that the way this guy has conversations about consent is like pretty shit. And I think he'd be influential. Sure. But when you say like, we need to deplatform this guy from everywhere because he's going to grow and we need to never have these types of challenging conversations with people that might get big off him. That's like, well, OK, well, I think that's really dumb. But that's what I'm that's engaging with right now. That's not what I said, though. I didn't say he needed to be deplatformed. I actually said to Stardust that I haven't read enough about the literature about deplatforming to take a strong stance on whether he should be deplatformed or not. My point is that I do think that it's pretty inappropriate for people in left and liberal spheres spheres to have him on to have like casual chit chats or okay, like. Okay, you're talking. You're using. You're saying deplatform in more words, right? People shouldn't be talking to him on their platforms because he might grow. That's your no, 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 no. What I'm saying is like, if you're going to have him on, it should be to to really fucking drill this stuff with him. Um, I think if you just have him on to like casually chit chat, that's bad and irresponsible. I think if you have him on to be like, why did you say this? Why did you say that? These are the implications of this. This is the research you're not doing. This is why what you're saying is harmful. Like, that's good. If you can do that properly, that's good. You can do that properly. Vosh can do that properly. Um, okay, why not just, you? I think you probably can. I think you know enough about things. Like, I, my, my personal interaction with you, you definitely seem like you have a decent understanding of these types of things. So I don't know why you wouldn't just pick like one very narrow, very specific topic and then just ask him like, hey, you're making their own some shows. Do you want to deal with like these particular things that you said? Like, it seems like it would be like a within your wheelhouse and it's not going to be like a complicated debate on, you know, general relativity versus Newtonian. It's not going to be some crazy shit. Like, it's going to be something that you could probably handle now. I you're think that this is so important that it needs to be in the hands of people who are better than I. I mean, okay. Then, well, I'll, you know, I'll watch this video and maybe the next time I see it, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him why he's inadvertently pro-rape or something. Go ahead. Um, I'm gonna send you a couple because it's not just this video. There's also the one about pedophiles are sick and evil, which um, I think there's a lot of contention about this one because his main point is that like we shouldn't just we shouldn't talk about how we want to kill pedophiles and how we need to lock them up forever. Um, and I actually agree with him on that, but I think that the way he handles this is so awful. Like he kind of just like wags his finger at people who aren't super sympathetic and shames them. And I don't think that that works. I think that this is also one that you should take a look at. Sure. He spends a Wait, lot of hold on. time- Wait, you Just in terms of what you just said, that didn't actually sound like a bad thing to me that he's like wagging his fingers at people. Like I, as much as I hate to say it, like I can even draw to my, my Jesuit training here, right? Like sympathy is the first step at fixing almost any any human related problem, right? Like, so but that, I don't, yeah, I don't think that shaming people, oh, sorry, I don't think that shaming people because they're not sympathetic enough and being like, um, oh, you just want a virtue signal. Oh, you're this, that, and the other. I, I don't know that that's really going to move anyone who is already like, I hate pedophiles. Let's kill them. Um, I, I think, you know, that's just going to make them more defensive and make them dig in more. So I think when you're talking about like, you know, compassion for these people, what you should do is be like, hey, look at these studies that show that like there is a lot of trauma. Hey, look at what we're doing in like in this German institution. Like they're showing that, um, you know, if you do this, if you give them sex uh, hormone repressing pills, if you, you know, you, know, you do talk therapy you do you know uh what is it see um the cognitive behavioral therapy if you do that like these things help i think that is a really effective way to go about it but just being like oh you're a fucking virtue signaler if you say you're not a pedophile you're the biggest pedophile fuck you like that's not going to change anyone's mind sure and you know what i can and you know what that's a really good criticism because it actually strikes to exactly what he's trying to do which is like change people's minds or he says he wants to have it. so but so maybe that exactly. would be maybe that would be a conversation that he would like entertain like oh shit well you know if that is something that would turn people away and that seems like pretty like agreeable now i don't know if that's a fair characterization of his work or if that's what he said maybe he has maybe he hasn't i'm gonna send it to you i'm okay. gonna send it to you you'll see you can watch the whole thing he spends a lot of time talking about like simulated child porn and like sex robots and I don't know. It's it's very uncomfortable and there's another part of me that thinks that like I shouldn't be I don't know how to say this without being really offensive. Be He's really willing to offensive. talk about Well, I don't want to be. He's willing to talk about things about his personal life and his opinions mm -hmm. that are very clearly unfiltered that I don't think are necessarily appropriate for me to like 
Hey, first of all, he would disagree. If you're making it public, if you're gonna bring it up, then it's fair game for other people to talk about. I think that's fair. He should agree with that. If he doesn't, he's a, he's a hypocrite. He should be okay to- I, I, yeah, I guess. I mean, it just doesn't feel right to like, kind of milk it for content, I guess. Like liking so, tweets and retweeting stuff that's making fun of my personal life? I'm just kidding, I'm sorry. I just had to loop it back. But like, no, but I think if he's gonna make it public, I think it's probably fair for you to say like, hey, I, and you can even ask people for it. You'd be like, hey, do you want to chat about this? Are you comfortable chatting about this? Like I say as much as I'm like, hey, if you don't want to talk about something, you can bring it up. Like that's probably fair game though, because he's using his personal stories to bring people into his way of thinking. So it's probably fair for you to say like, well, I'm going to talk about this personal story because of your way of thinking, right? I think that's fair. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna send you some of this stuff. I think I think we're pretty much on the same page about this for now, but I, I am gonna send you some. Okay. Um, is that it? Is it content over? Is it? Is there anything else you'd like to go over? Are we good? Just like, I'm gonna not like drama tweets, but um, just, can you just be more charitable? I'll be more charitable to you. Can you be more charitable to me, please? Maybe? <laughs> um, please? Look, I, I'm going, okay, I'm going to make a concerted effort to be more charitable to you about things. Can you please try to give me the same in return? Uh, yes, I will try my hardest, but damn, I mean, if it's a tweet talking, involving like my kid or my wife, I'm probably is, not gonna like extend very much charity, but I'll try, okay? I'm not, I'm not talking about drama, I'm talking about like mm -hmm. my opinions on issues. Oh, sure. Okay, my main issue you. is usually is the whole cry bully thing. I don't, I don't necessarily like, I don't think I have that many issues with your opinions on things, unless you start talking about economics and lefty shit, but otherwise I think, yeah, probably okay, yeah. All of my opinions on economics are SDL's opinions, so if you want to fight with me, you have to fight with him. Okay, okay well, you know what? If you're going to copy opinions from him, that's a good person to copy opinions from, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, all right. We good? Anything else? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. I think that's it. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. Content. Fucking losing. What are you talking about? The Halo's the real content. That's what people are here for. All right, have fun. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Jesus. How are we doing? <laughs> How are we doing? Spite driven destiny. <clears throat> Did she out your personal sexual experience? Me, Melina, and her all hooked up one day, okay? It was a fun time. I thought it was a good experience, all right? I, now, that was private, and I don't usually bring that up, but she brought it up, so that's the, that's the history there, all right? But it was a fun time. We all were at chill. It was cool. We all had fun. It was a long, long, long time ago, though. This was like three years ago, I think. I thought we were done. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I just had a question. Uh, so I, I heard you saying that you think that all these other people can handle a conversation with him. Vosh did fuck all in that conversation with him. So I just want to say, like, what did Vosh do that I didn't do? Uh -oh. I think that Vosh legitimized him at all in any way. Okay, so just not com not engaging at all in a conversation is is uh, enough for you then. Okay, I don't think that the way that you're framing this is very honest. Um, you had an interview with him where it was about getting to know him as a person, whereas Vosh was supposed to be having a debate with him. Um, yeah, did I gave him pushback, though, on, like, specific ideas, whereas, like, not, not even a conversation really took place between the two of them, so. I think there's quite a few things that you actually didn't provide pushback or anywhere near adequate pushback on, um, and I think that Vosh started to have a debate with him, gave him pushback on several of the things he said, got uncomfortable, and hung up. So, okay. I don't really see how these I'll remember to hang up next time I disagree with somebody. Wait, can I ask you one, hold on, can I ask you one? Whoa! Disagree? What? What are you doing here? One of you fuckers fuck? called me back in! Yeah, because it was a problem, sorry. Well, don't, on? then don't apologize, okay? Hold on, Merrick, can I ask you one question? I had to test your intellectual honesty, okay? Sure. <sighs> Arco Pedophiles is a banger, right? You gotta admit, that is a banger song. Uh, I don't, I haven't actually like listened to all of it. Okay, um, don't do it on stream, do it privately, okay? Listen through that album, okay? Is, there's some here's, banger here's tracks what, on there, okay? Here's what I will, oh, you mean the the album. Is that the one where the, uh, I'm a pedophile? Is that also yes. on I Kill Pedophiles? but also I Kill Pedophiles, okay? So there's some karmic balance there, all right? Listen, don't worry. I, I don't like it, and against my better judgment, it's very well produced. And it's not terrible music. Okay. Okay. All right, have fun. Be I don't right. like it. Sorry for coming back in, Chad.
What? My power keeps going up and down and up and down and up and down. Do you agree that Merrick doesn't want to deplatform to grow, but doesn't want people to help him build on an established platform through Twitch? I pulled chat and the majority thinks she wants him deplatformed and banned, I guess. Um, I don't know if she wants him banned or not. I mean, I guess like when you talk about like deplatformed or not platformed, they feel similar to me. But I, I guess like if I'm reading into how Merrick usually is, she probably doesn't want him banned. She just wants him not amplified, which I, for some people they would say, well, that's still both canceling. Um, but you, there is a difference there, I guess. So. I feel like her whole take was just, I don't like Mr. Golan and the things he says. I want to rally against him, but I don't want to do it myself. No, don't be dumb, right? I think she brings up a somewhat valid point because it's the same point that I brought up before, that if you don't caveat or qualify enough, people can walk away with different thoughts about what you're saying than what you intend them to think. Um, now, Mr. Girl's response to this was, well, I'm asking people to engage with me a bit more honestly rather than to assume the worst of what I'm saying. Um, whereas somebody like me, or obviously Merrick, might say like, okay, well, we have to kind of meet people where they're at when it comes to doing public content and realize that whether you like it or not, people are going to engage with some content in really negative ways, whether you like it or not, right? Which is fine. I think there are good arguments on both sides. That's literally part of what my argument about um, this was with him, right? I argued with him about this, literally. Because um, it is a complicated thing. 